Uh, welcome to Star OMAP Tutorials. My name is Priya Desai and I'm the Research and Development Manager for Biomedical Informatics um, here at Research ID at Stanford Madison. This is part two of tutorial one. Um, now in order to actually be able to uh, follow along and practice the exercises that have been outlined in this tutorial, you would need to be added to a Google project called SOM RIT Star Training. So it's listed right here, SOM RIT Star Training. Uh, and in order for us to do that, you must have a fully sponsored Stanford University ID. So that is the one prerequisite that we have for you be able to be able to um, actually be able to access these tutorials uh, and all the material that goes with it. Um, please email Priya Desai at PRD at Stanford with sign up for tutorial one in the subject line if indeed you do have a fully sponsored SUNET ID and you would like to um, you know, follow along and take this tutorial. Uh, once you've received an email granting you access to the Google group uh, called SOM RIT Star Training, you will be able to follow along and pretty much do um, you know, everything that we're doing in this tutorial. Uh, once again, uh, you know, disclaimer, this access is only available to users with a fully sponsored Stanford University um, ID. All right, so let's actually start with a quick hands-on exercise. So first, go ahead and open another browser, another tab. So I've done that right here. And you want to make sure that you are logged in with your Stanford University ID. So if you actually log into, say, Chrome, uh, you should be able to see which Gmail account you're logged in um, right on the uh, right hand corner here. And when you click on that, it should be your Stanford email account. Um, once that's done, make sure or try to navigate to this link. It will take you to cloud.google.com. Go ahead and click um, go to the console. Depending on whether or not you have um, other Google projects that um, are linked with your Stanford account, you may or may not go to a page that looks exactly like this. But what will happen is if you click up here, you will be able to see, you should see select from stanford.edu and listed here, you should all see this some um, RIT star training. You should all see this particular project because once um, you know, you've know you reached out and we've given you access, you will all be part of this project. So you should be able to go to some RIT star training. Um, next, make yourself, uh, you know, make move over to the left hand side um, this hamburger button. This is really a navigation button. Um, click on it and make your way all the way down to um, the section on big data. Under that, you will see BigQuery. You can go ahead and click on this uh, or double click on it. And what will happen then is you can pin it. Pinning it, what pinning it does is it brings it right to the top. So you see for me, every time I actually come here, the the two services that I use the most, uh, the storage and BigQuery, they are right up here for me, so I don't need to navigate to them every time. So go ahead, make your way to BigQuery. And all of you should actually, um, here you will see under resources, you should see this some RIT star training project. I can see a lot more projects because I have access to a lot more GCP projects. Once, you know, those of you who go on and create your own GCP projects that are linked to your Stanford account, um, you know, you will see all those GCP projects linked here. So for those of you who are just starting out, initially it'll just be the SOM RIT start training. So go ahead and click um, on this arrow that will open it up and um, in here, you will see listed a lot of data sets. These are the data sets that exist in this project right now. So many of these data sets belong to other people. Um, but the data set that I want you guys to pay attention to is this one. Synpuff 2M, Synpuff underscore 2M underscore CDM underscore 53 uh, underscore 2019 1104. So go ahead and click on that. When you click on that, 
under this data set you see a list of tables these are the tables that are part of this data set and turns out these are actually the tables these are the standard tables for um, the OMOP schema so let's go back to our slide deck um, so yeah, actually at this point, I think you should take a few minutes and um, go ahead and explore these tables. Um, you know, feel free to click on them, uh, poke around, explore them. Uh, you know, you won't break anything. So go ahead and do that um, and see if you can actually try and answer a couple of questions. Um, can you figure out how many people are in this data set? Which table do you think would would tell you that. Can you figure out how many tables are there? Um, so go ahead, um, you know, feel free to pause the video and, um, you know, take a few minutes to explore the data set. Um, all right, so hopefully you've had a chance to um, look through this data set. As you must have realized, um, you can explore the schema of each of these tables by actually clicking on the schema tab. So click on any table that interests you, say if it's the concept table, click on the schema tab and essentially the schema tab, um, you know, gives you lists out the field names and the integer types, the data types that are um, that make up this particular table. Um, you can um, you can see details like uh, when was this table generated, how big is it, how many rows does it have under the details tab. And you can also go ahead and um, click preview and it actually gives you a preview of the first 100 rows um, of the table. And you can pretty much do that for every table. So coming back to the questions uh, we'd asked, um, which table is it that actually um, tells you how many people are in this data set. It's, it's the person table and um, you know you could look at the preview and it'll tell you one of hundred of 2.32 million. So you know there are 2.32 million patients in this or you could actually look in the details tab um, which lists um, how many rows there are. So the, the patient table, uh, the person table is actually the patient table. It contains one unique row for each distinct patient. And we're gonna explore all of these um, in detail. The data set you're looking at is actually the synthetic claims data set from the Center for Medicare and Medicaid. Um, we're using this public data set and what we've done is we've converted it into the OMOP uh, data model. And um, we're using it as the example for you to be able to explore the schema and the features of the OMOP data model. Our goal is to use this to familiarize you with the OMOP data model. Um, we've uploaded the, um, um, you know, we've uploaded this data, data set into BigQuery because, you know, the actual star OMOP data, which is the Stanford data in the OMOP format, um, is on BigQuery and that's how you would query it. So we want to just get you familiar with um, with the Stanford OMOP data practice using um, the SIMPAP data set. All right. Um, I just went through some of this. The goal, this, this particular data set actually is um, widely used to train researchers on the use and complexity of conducting analysis. Uh, the one thing to remember is that this is a claims data set and a claims data set is intrinsically different from an electronic health records data set, which is what is the Stanford OMOP. The Stanford OMOP is essentially the, the electronic health records from the two hospitals um, converted into the OMOP data format. So there are some things that are will be a little bit different than you know, what you would see in the synthetic data set. For example, you may not see as many labs. You will actually see, um, uh, you know, the the care or the, the payer table populated and so on, which will not be for the Stanford data set. So why BigQuery, you may ask? Um, well, for the past so many years, um, all of our clinical data has always resided in databases. Um, 
on premise. So basically, we have uh, you know multiple database servers, and um, you always need people to maintain them. Somebody um, you know they need to be managed, they need to be updated. Uh, basically, requires infrastructure and personal investment. Um, and as the amount of data and the types of clinical data that we generate in the hospital has increased and the interest in actually using all these data types to actually mine this data for, um, you know, for uh, insights has, has increased, um, storing all of this on premise has just become increasingly unsustainable. And with the cloud, advent of cloud technologies, it just, just made so much more sense to embrace that technology and we happen to have picked BigQuery as our database backend. Um, you know, our goal is actually to be cloud agnostic, but for now we're going with um, Google Cloud and with BigQuery. So, you know, some of the main benefits that it really um, offers is it's highly scalable. It scales with the data and the users. It's fully managed. You know, we don't really need to invest in infrastructure, personnel, space, um, and all of that. It's all taken care of for you. Uh, you know, it's a it's a big win that the standard SQL code pretty much works with with BigQuery as well. So you know, you don't really have to go learn a new language. Um, most people, you know, pick up BigQuery, um, the BigQuery SQL, pretty easily because it's it's very similar to standard SQL. All right. So I wanted to take a couple of minutes to show you some of the other aspects of the Google Cloud Console. So let's make our way back to the console. Um, as you've um, already realized, that's the name of your Google Cloud project. Um, once you're in BigQuery, BigQuery actually offers you a lot of, um, lot of other functionality. Uh, for example, once you've made a few queries, you can actually click your query history and you can pull up any of your old queries so you really don't have to um, you know, go hunting for your queries again. Uh, all of your query history is saved. Um, you can specifically save queries, so queries that you have to run often or often rerun, you can save them. You can schedule queries. Um, so that is, again, a functionality that you have. Um, in addition, you could, um, you know, once you're in a pro in a project uh, and in a table, say we're looking at the care site table, you could actually export this table. You could share it. You could co make a copy of the table. All of this from the console itself. Though we would highly recommend that um, we you don't do. Um, when you start working with the Stanford OMAP data, you don't do this on the console. We're going to show you how to do all of this from the Jupyter Notebooks. What you realize is the Jupyter Notebooks from the Nero interface are absolutely equivalent to everything that you can do on the console. But I wanted to make sure that you actually have a few minutes and actually explore this console because for many of you, this may be the first time you're actually seeing a Google Cloud um, project. And many of you will get your own project, in which case you you know, you would you need to know that you you actually have a lot of control over who can access your uh, resources, which resources can they access. So, in other words, for example, uh, you know this this is our project, but uh, you know we give each of you access to this project, but each of you only has read and write access to the BigQuery tables. If you actually hit this navigator menu. All these, these are all other services that are offered by the Google Cloud Platform, like you know the Compute Engine, Kubernetes, um, Cloud Run, um, and so on. Or uh, you know for storage, you could have a bucket, you could have uh, Bigtable, etc. The the owner of the project can actually control which user has how much how much access to 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 which resource. So you actually have granular level access to all the, you know, you provide granular level access um, to all the users, you control that access. And all of you for the duration of this um, project, so basically you've all been given access for about 12 weeks. For 12 weeks you can read and write 
any number of tables you want but only in BigQuery. These are other people's tables so if you're in this project you will see some of these other tables. Maybe when you actually log in which may be you know three months from when this tutorial is being recorded you might see different um, different data sets in here because you know we might clean them up or whatever but you know hopefully you will definitely see your synpuff data set so you will see a diff you will see different data sets but you only have um, you know read access to the synpuff data set and you have write access so you can create your own tables you cannot delete somebody else's tables um, all right so basically in addition to what you can do this is all on gcp you also have um you know you can make your way to the billing portal the api and services actually um, is where you would control who has um, what kind of access the apis as well as the im admin is where you would control that you can set up different kinds of um, uh, firewalls uh, you can do all of that under security um, and you know feel free to go watch more videos on uh, on GCP to understand you know more about the intricacies and nuances of uh, how much control you have once you have your own project so to give you a 30,000 foot view um, GCP in in the GCP world um, resources consists of all your physical assets so your computers your hard hard disk drives your uh, virtual resources your virtual machines all the physical assets um, that may be contained in some of the google data centers all over the all over the world these uh, physical assets are what are called resources um, what you typically might be used to thinking of as software or hardware products in the cloud computing framework are what are called services so your compute engine the the actual storage buckets BigQuery, um, Dataflow, these are all services. And in order to be able to use any of the services or any of the resources, you have to belong to a project. So the project is really the organizing entity for all your resources. It's what forms the basis for creating, enabling, and using all of your GCP services. You can also think of the project as made up of the settings, permissions, any other metadata that may describe your applications. So resources within a certain pro within a project can actually work together really easily. They can communicate through an internal network um, and so on. Um, all of you will have access to this project, the SOM RIT STAR training project for 12 weeks once um, you've signed up and we hope that you'll be able to complete all the you know all four of the tutorials in those 12 weeks if you need more time please feel free to email uh, priya desai at prd at stanford.edu all right look forward to seeing you at the next tutorial thanks The preceding program is copyrighted by the Board of Trustees of the Leland Stanford Junior University. Please visit us at med.stanford.edu.